In this video, we're going to do an optimization example for revenue. Let the total revenue be TR is equal to 700 minus 3025 divided by Q plus 7 minus Q. What is the marginal revenue when revenue is at a maximum? What is the associated maximum revenue? So let's start with this first part here. What is marginal revenue when revenue is at a maximum? Well, let's remember the definition of marginal revenue. Marginal revenue, we'll refer to it as MR, is the rate of change or slope of the total revenue with respect to demand. So when we're looking at maximum revenue, when we're looking at maximum revenue, the rate of change that we're seeing here, that first derivative, is going to be equal to zero. That slope is equal to zero. Therefore, by definition of marginal revenue, marginal revenue is going to be equal to zero at maximum revenue. So that resolves the first part of the question. Now, what is the maximum revenue? So first we're going to get that derivative, that marginal revenue, that derivative of TR with respect to Q. And that derivative is going to be the derivative of this function right here. So we have the derivative d over dq of 700 minus 3025 over q plus 7 minus q. Now the derivative of 700 is going to be 0. Um, so I have 0. And then I have the derivative of 3025 times q plus 7 to the power of negative 1 if I want to employ the chain rule, or alternatively I could use the quotient rule, minus the derivative of q is going to be equal to 1. So I'm going to do this derivative still. I'm going to use the chain rule here where u is equal to q plus 7, and then I'm going to have a function f of u is equal to u to the power of ne negative 1. The derivative of this function, this little mini function in the middle here, is going to be equal to di f by di u times du dq. This is going to give me um, di f by di u is going to be negative 1 u to the power of negative 2, and my u is q plus 7. That's the di f by di u part. Now I have to do the du by dq. This is a derivative of q plus 7. Now the derivative of that is going to be 1. So now I have negative 1 times q plus 7 to the power of negative 2. So putting that all together, I'm going to ignore the 0. I have negative 3025 times negative 1 times q plus 7 all to the power of negative 2 minus 1. That gives me 3,025 times q plus 7 to the power of negative 2 minus 1. And that is my marginal revenue. Now, as we determined earlier, marginal revenue is going to be equal to 0, where revenue is equal to a maximum. That slope is going to be equal to 0, that rate of change in revenue. So I'm going to set this to be equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for q. So I'm going to move 1 to the other side of the equation. I get 3,025 over q plus 7 to the power of 2. Just moving this function to the denominator is equal to 1. Then I can multiply both sides by q plus 7. I get 3,025 is equal to q plus 7. I should have said squared before. I can take the square root of both sides. The square root of 3,025 is going to be equal to plus or minus 55 is going to be equal to q plus 7. And then I can subtract 7 from both sides. So I have negative 7 plus or minus 55 is equal to q. So this is going to give me q is equal to 48 or q is equal to negative 62. Now I can't have negative quantity, so this is not um, a valid answer. So I have q is equal to 48. At this level of demand, I'm going to have my marginal revenue equal to zero. So at this point, working through my optimization process, I've determined my first derivative 
I've set it equal to zero and solved for it. Now I'm going to so find the associated revenue value. So I'm going to take my revenue equation. Total revenue is equal to 700 minus 3,025 over Q plus 7 minus Q. And I'm going to substitute 48 into it. So I get 700 minus 3,025 over 48 plus 7 minus 48. And what I get is 597 for that total revenue. So I have a coordinate where Q is equal to 48, total revenue is equal to 597, and I know that MR is going to be equal to zero at this point. However, I don't know if this point is a maximum, a minimum, or a saddle point. And I wouldn't want to mistake a minimum for a maximum and then aim for minimum revenue instead of maximum revenue. So now we're going to do the second derivative test to identify if this is indeed a maximum, a minimum, or a saddle point. So the next step here is to determine my second derivative and do the second derivative test. Steps four and steps five. So my second derivative, tr double prime, is going to be the derivative of my first derivative, which I have right up here. And I'm going to do the derivative of this function. So what I'm going to get when I do this derivative is going to be 3,025 times the derivative of q plus 7 to the power of negative 2. And the derivative of 1 is simply going to be 0. So once again, I'm going to use the chain rule to do this derivative, where this is going to be u equals to q plus 7. And I'm going to have some function of u, which is going to be equal to u to the power of negative 2. So the derivative of this df by dq is going to be equal to di f by di u times du dq. For di f by di u, it's the derivative of this portion. So that's going to be negative 2 times u to the power of negative 3. And my u is going to be q plus 7. And once again, my du dq, the derivative of this part of the function, is going to be equal to 1. So I get negative 2 times q plus 7 to the power of negative 3. And I'm going to put that into this uh, equation for the second derivative. And I get 3,025 times negative 2 times q plus 7 to the power of negative 3, which is going to give me negative 6,050 q plus 7 to the power of negative 3. And that is my second derivative. So now I have my second derivative. I'm going to substitute my critical x value, in this case q value, into this equation. So we had determined that q is equal to 48 at critical point. So I'm going to substitute that into this equation. So my tr double prime, when q is equal to 48, is going to be equal to negative 6050 times 48 plus 7 to the power of negative 3. And this is going to give me negative 0 0.03636. Now it's a small number, but it is a negative number. So what we're looking at in this region is a region where we are concave down. We're at this point at the top of it where the slope is equal to 0. So indeed, we are looking at a local maximum when we're looking at this revenue. So as a concluding statement, we have our maximum revenue equal to, and the value of that we had already determined right here, 597. And that occurs when Q is equal to 48. So there's a classic optimization problem where we're trying to maximize revenue.